today we're going to be talking about the circulatory system. We are going to cover both arteries and veins because those are the vessels that circulate blood throughout our body. Now remember, we talked about arteries start with an A. So arteries away is how we're going to remember things. Arteries bring blood away from the heart. So our first step is going to be covering circulation that's bringing blood away from the heart. So we're going to talk about all of the arteries or all the major arteries in the body. And then the second part of circulation, we will talk about all of the veins in the body. And those are the vessels that bring blood back to the heart. So let's start off with our arteries. All right, so we're going to talk about circulation in this video. So what I did is I ha I'm having us start with this picture of the heart where we left off in terms of all of the blood vessels that come out of the heart. And what we're gonna do for our circulation lecture is we're actually just going to add to this when we're talking about a few more arteries that make its way up to the head and some arteries that come down to the arm, and then we'll use a different picture when we're talking about the other arteries expanding off of these vessels here. So like I said, we're just gonna add on to this. So we're gonna add a couple of different things off of our right and left common carotid artery, which is this magenta one right here. So here's our right and here's our left. And as you recall, this gray dotted line is just separating the right from left side. So we're going to have some branches here. So I'm going to draw those in black to separate things out. We're going to have a branch here and here and the same thing on the other side. We're also going to have one other artery that is split off from one of these here. There we go. So what happens is whenever you have a common artery with that word common in it, it's usually the beginning of an artery that will branch off later. So I'm gonna show you just that. Now with this, we're going to have Let's see, we'll use blue, dark blue here. And that dark blue is going to be our right and left external carotid. So external as like away from the midline. So this is going to be our right external carotid. And this is going to be our left external carotid right there. So we'll add that to our lifts, list right here. Right and left external carotid artery. Remember AA is the abbreviation for artery. Now if we have an external carotid, what do you think we're going to have on the other side? Exactly, we're going to have an internal carotid as well so that's going to be right here our right internal carotid and left internal carotid now one other little branch that i want you to make a note of that branches is one of the many branches off of the right external carotid is called our superficial temporal artery, which makes our way up to our temple. So let's label that. That's gonna be this one right here. That will be our superficial temporal artery and it goes towards the temple just like it sounds now the other thing we're going to add on to this nice colorful image we have here is arteries that make their way down to the arm 
Now, remember, we were talking about subclavian vein up here in our heart lecture, and the border of that is the lateral border of the first rib, and then it turns into another artery called axillary, ax axillary artery. And remember, we learned that our axillary region is in our armpit, so that's where that axillary artery travels. So let me slide this up a little bit because we don't really need to see the very top. I'm going to draw out a few more arteries, just like that axillary artery, but I'm going to draw a few more that are going to make their way down the arm. Alrighty, so let's pretend that this is the lateral border of our first rib right here. And let's see, the challenge with all of this is finding another color that I haven't used. Hmm. Alright, let's use, we're going to use gray. Alright, so Remember, this is our right subclavian artery, and the same thing is going to take place over here, but I'm just not going to draw it on the left side because we don't need to. So we're going to have our axillary artery right here. And that's going to turn into something called our brachial artery, which is in our arm. Which makes sense, right? Because brachial or brachium means arm, and that's another term that we reviewed at the beginning of the semester. Now, a few other last ones. So that's in your arm, and then now we're going to move down to the forearm area. And what are the two bones that make up the forearm? That's right, you got your radius and your ulna. So because of that, we're going to have a radial artery as well as an ulnar artery. So I'm going to actually use some patterns because I don't have enough colors for this. So our radial artery is going to be those little stripes. And remember with everything, we're always referring to anatomical position. So the this is going to be the lateral side, which is where the radius is and the radial artery is. Now our purple stripes over here is going to be our ulnar artery. Our green stripes here is going to be our superficial and deep palmar arch and those are of course superficial and deep in the palm of our hand
And lastly, we have our digital arteries that of course make its way to our digits. So I'm gonna draw little magenta stripes here. And fill in the lines there with our, for our digital arteries. There we go. All right, so this has covered arteries that come out from the heart. And remember, all of these ones are going up towards our head and neck. And we're gonna go over a little bit of detail into some arteries that actually go into the brain next. Um, but we have branches off of these on both sides and our subclavian artery is going to go to both sides and it's going to extend on this left side here, even though we just have the right pictured at the lateral border of the first rib, our subclavian, subclavian artery is going to turn into our brachial or excuse me, our axillary artery. And then in the arm, it's going to turn into our brachial artery. And then on the lateral side, that'll give way to the radial artery. On the medial side, it'll give way to the ulnar artery. We're gonna have a superficial and a deep palmar arch. And then we're gonna have digital arteries going into our fingers. So this is our cutoff point on this figure right here, which is our abdominal aorta. Remember, we talked about last time how our aorta ends up turning into our thoracic aorta and then the border that creates the difference between the thoracic and abdominal aorta is the diaphragm. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to take this abdominal aorta and thoracic aorta and I'm going to zoom in on this area and introduce you to the what else comes next to give blood supply to the pelvis and the legs. So let's get started on that. All right, so let's start over. So let's start over here to the side. Um, I'm gonna draw some of the thoracic aorta. And then we're gonna have a diaphragm here. And then remember that's gonna turn into the abdominal aorta. We're going to have a couple of things coming out of here. And a few branches here. One more thing coming out down here. And a few more branches down here. All right, so we're just going to start off with that. Now we're going to relabel some of those things, and I'm going to try to use the same colors. So this is going to be our thoracic aorta. And then we're gonna draw a little more detail into our abdominal aorta, which is gonna be below the diaphragm here. Oftentimes if you hear someone having an aortic or abdominal aortic aneurysm, that's where this will happen. So it's basically an expansion of this aorta filling up with blood, which is not what we want. 
So anyway, this is our abdominal aorta. And it's going to have a few things coming out of it. Okay, so the first thing is going to be here at the very top. That is our celiac trunk. Now there are a few things going branching off of that. I'm just going to write them down and in, instead of drawing them just to make our picture a little bit clearer. So we're going to have our, it's going to give way to our left gastric artery our common hepatic artery and hepatic refers to the liver and we'll get to that when we discuss the liver a little bit later and it's also going to give us our splenic artery which will go towards the spleen now one thing i forgot about up here coming off of the thoracic aorta is it's actually going to give way to thoracic intercostal arteries. And remember, intercostal, just like we talked about intercostal muscles, those are between the ribs because when we refer to costal, we usually refer to ribs. And those arteries are going to go in between the ribs coming off of the thoracic aorta. But again, we're not going to draw them just to simplify things for the time being. Now, we're also going to have another thing that will come off of our abdominal aorta we're gonna have these two pink dots and these dots are essentially just a representation of a branch an artery like coming out of the page from the abdominal aorta so we're gonna have both our superior and inferior of course, the superior one is superior, the inferior one is inferior. Um, and those are going to be our superior and inferior mesenteric arteries. Which are going to go toward the digestive system. Now we have two branches off to the side here. coming off of the abdominal aorta. And those are our right and left renal arteries. Renal always refers to kidney, so those are gonna go towards our kidneys. Now our abdominal aorta is gonna branch into two different things here. And let's find a good color, here we go. And before I forget, I'm going to make this a little bit longer. Alrighty. So that nice purple region right there is our right and left common iliac arteries. Now remember, oops, arteries. Remember those Whenever we have common, it's going to split into two different things, and the name always tells us where it is. So this iliac artery is right in that region around our iliac crest in our pelvis, and it's going to split into the right and left external and internal iliac arteries. So let's draw the, we'll color in the external right here.
and then we'll also color in the internal. Now I'm going to draw one more border in just like we had a border that was the diaphragm. We're also going to have a border here. And that is going to be our inguinal ligament. And I'll, di I'll label diaphragm over here. All right, so above the inguinal ligament, it's gonna be our external iliac artery, and then below, it's gonna uh, turn into our femoral artery. Just like we have a femur bone in our thigh, it's gonna be right around the region of the femur. Now what I want to do is I want to show you the continuation of this femoral artery, but I'm going to show you from a side view because it makes it a little bit easier to see the arteries themselves. So we're going to draw a side view or a lateral view of the basically someone's leg. So remember we were up here in the thoracic region, here's someone's belly where the abdominal aorta is, and then here is where their pelvis region is, and now we're moving into the legs. But we're gonna change gears and I'm gonna show you a side view. So here's someone's legs. We're gonna draw their knee here. And then, oops, that's their thigh, their knee, and then their leg, and their foot. I'm going to give them a nice calf muscle. They've been working out. And we'll give them, oops, they have really tiny hamstrings and quads. And then here's their butt. All right, so they have kind of super long legs, but that's okay. We'll work with it. All right, so we have an inguinal ligament that comes out um, from the side of our pelvis in towards an angle. So that's going to be our in inguinal lig ligament or part of it. And then remember, we're going to have our femoral artery, but I'm just going to draw an outline of our vessels. So it's going to come out from here. And then it's actually going to make our way back towards the back of our knee, right there. And then it's actually going to split them. Into two different branches right here. All right, so those are our vessels. Now let's use the same color. So we're going to be using this for our femoral artery. This nice turquoise color, and it's gonna make its way from inguinal ligament all the way down. All right, so what that is going to turn into is our popliteal artery. And that's gonna be back behind our knee. So here's our patella, our kneecap right here. And behind our knee, it's going to be popliteal artery. And we know that because there's actually something called popliteal fossa. So this back of the knee region is it was referred to as the popliteal area. So we're gonna make that dark blue right here. right and left pop lip teal artery 
and that's going to split into two arteries. The one in the back is going to be our posterior tibial artery. And you guessed it, what do you think the other one is gonna be in the front? Perfect, that's going to be our anterior tibial artery. And then on the top of the foot, we're gonna have one more artery and that's going to be called our dorsalis pedis artery and you may know that from taking a pulse at that dorsalis pedis. Now the only other artery I forgot to mention before is right here it's actually in between the superior and inferior mesenteric arteries i'm going to color it in red and that's going to be a little bit different for males or females but it's going to be the testicular or ovarian arteries so you're going to have a right or a left test Testicular or ovarian arteries, depending on the sex of the person. All right, so we're going to switch gears now a little bit, and we're going to switch to arteries that provide blood to the brain. And in doing so, we're going to focus on one main structure. The name of that structure is called the Circle of Willis. And, you know, that was back from a time when anyone who discovered anything would name it after themselves, so that's why it's called that. Now, this circle of Willis is a cir circle of blood vessels that's actually on the inferior side of the brain. Now, it essentially serves the purpose of supplying blood to the brain. Now, it's something called a circular anas circulatory anastomosis. So I'm going to write that out and then I'm going to explain it. Now, a circulatory anastomosis essentially means it's a connection uh, between blood vessels. And the reason that all these blood vessels are connected is just in case there is damage to one of them, there's still a way to get blood to the certain area of the brain that was previously being supplied by the area that's damaged. So in doing so, it serves as kind of like a backup plan. So the circle of Willis isn't the only anastomosis in the body. There's actually one, for example, around the scapula, which we didn't cover just because that's a little too detailed for this class, but there's another anastomosis there and essentially it's the same idea. So it's a connection between blood vessels. And if one of those blood vessels gets uh, damaged or there's a clot there or anything like that, there's still a way for blood to roundabout get to that same area. So it's really like a safety net or a backup plan to get an area to 
or to get blood to a certain area just in case there's damage. And of course, blood supply to the brain is vital. So that's why we have a really important circulatory anastomosis there, which is this circle of Willis. Now let's draw out the circle of Willis. And remember, this is going to be an inferior view of the brain. All right, let's, let's draw this guy out. All right, so that's our fancy little circle of Willis here, and now we're going to label each different part of it. Let's start with this red portion right here. Which is anterior cerebral artery. Now we're also going to have a middle cerebral artery. a posterior cerebral artery and this all makes sense because of the orientation of this given that this is the inferior side of the brain that this is pressed up against so this will be anterior this will be posterior and this will be more in the middle And those three arteries together will provide blood supply for the cerebrum, which is, of course, super important. Now, we're going to have one other little attachment there, which is going to be attached to the middle cerebral artery. And I just wanted to make a note that I'm cutting all of these off just because I just want to focus on the circle of Willis in general. But there is our right and left internal carotid. And remember, we talked about those internal carotids before when we were talking about circulation back when we were using this image. So remember, we have our internal carotids in green. So what I'm showing you here is basically an extension of where that internal carotid goes to. Now, a few other pieces. We're gonna have our basilar artery down here. And then we're gonna have a posterior and anterior communicating artery. So this is going to be our anterior communicating artery. Um, and note that this is anterior in the anterior direction. So I didn't actually label anterior and posterior, but as you may have guessed, that's where they are because here is our anterior cerebral artery as well. And then we're going to have our posterior communicating artery 
right back here going posteriorly. Alright, so this is these are the main structures in the circle willis that give blood supply to the brain. So just to wrap things up, we have covered all of the arteries so far coming out of the heart and making its way into our arms, through our belly and pelvis, down our legs, and as well up to our brain. And next what we're going to cover is the veins in our body. So stay tuned for those veins. Um, but there are arteries, essentially remember A is a way. Arteries take blood away from the heart and after they use up all of that oxygen in the blood, it's going to bring blood back to the heart. So we're going to cover those veins that bring blood back to the heart next.